Have you ever been asked to pay 10% of the money paid in your land transaction? I know, right? 10% up to the chairman to sign on a transaction. Imagine doing a day-long transaction worth 100 million Ugandan shillings and the chairman is going to take 10 million of that in cash. Yes, that's the reality. And tonight on Area Code, we put in the spotlight the chairman's 10%. If this is what you've faced, what do you do? Welcome. My name is Sabrina. Land transaction fees in Uganda has always continued to fascinate me. And it seems I'm not alone. Chairmen or chairpersons in our villages, they are given authority without salary. I hear they pay them 700 every day. So what is that? Someone is getting 1 million every day. So if they, uh, if they ask for that uh, percentage, I think it is a, a problem of the government. It is a government to blame. They had any other way of getting some kamane, they wouldn't be asking for this. But this is all they can get. So I don't have any problem with them. After all, if you're buying a plot of 100 million, giving 1 million to someone is not a problem. Because 10% to be given to a chairman, which the government is paying, that is a lot, a lot of money. And the fact that is a legal case. And I want to call upon the Ugandans to boycott this kind of nonsense this is corruption if we are to change our uganda we have to start with these people if you you are a chairman loc one and the government is facilitating you and in fact when they make letters they are paid now it has come to land they need 10 percent that means if uh, it gets like four customers i i let me even call them customers for this case for god's sake this is unbelievable this is uh, corruption, and we are fighting corruption. Please, Chairman, uh, LOC ones, wherever you are, don't accept to be used by the devil. In Uganda, the process of acquiring land has long been mired by a plethora of challenges ranging from complex legal frameworks to corruption at various levels. Among the many hurdles faced by landowners and buyers alike are the legal fees charged by the local council one, LC1 officials during land transactions. Before we dive into this conversation, the question is, what are the legal fees paid in land transactions? And to help us have this conversation is Mr. Sekanjako Abubeka, who is a lawyer. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Yes. Mm. So we're having a discussion about LC1 fees and yes. how they are rampant yes. in land transactions right yes. now. But before we even get into that part of the conversation, let's talk yes. about all the fees that are involved when it comes to land transactions. The fees involved in the land transactions, they, they are quite... Um, not so many, mm. but um, very important that each and every aspect you have to meet them. Of course, starting with the lawyer's fees, yes, that is very important. You have to pay your lawyer. That's if you engaged any. And then secondly, you have to pay the transfer fees. Mm. The transfer fees, of course, I will compound it in that angle, but uh, it has the element of registration. There is a, a certain amount you pay at the land registry to ensure that the land is transferred then uh, you have to also pay the tax. There is a certain tax you have to pay, component of 1.5 value of the land you're transferring. Of course, uh, there are other rates mm -hmm. depending on the tenure of the land you're dealing with. Remember, we have the Milo, lease, uh, freehold, and customary. So depending on the nature of the, of the land, there are different um, rates which you pay. Yes. Um, and of course, now I have, I've, I've just taken you through the loop of, uh, of registered land. Yes, they are then unregistered land. Unregistered land, I mean those are uh, the Bibanja. Mm. So the Bibanja also have their own uh, specific way of dealing with them. Of course, some of the fees are not properly streamlined in the law. It depends on how you approach it and how you interact with those who are providing you the service. Mm. Uh, so um, the, the, the fees are there and they are provided for 
uh, of course, if you go to the Ministry of Lands, if you interact maybe with a lawyer, yeah. if you have uh, deployed a lawyer to, have to help you in the process, mm -hmm. the fees will def definitely be communicated so, to um, depending on the value. Okay, so you've experienced or you've encountered um, the 10% situation with the LC1s where they request for 10% on the value of the land. Mm -hmm. Is this legal for them to do? Okay, uh, now, uh, maybe we should first appreciate the relevancy of, of the LC in this whole process. Mm. You know, when you're dealing with the land transaction, due diligence is very important. Due diligence in the aspect that you have to understand the land you're purchasing in three dimensions. The land itself, the person you're selling the land to, and you, the vendor. So, it is important that for you to know, I'll just address the component of the land itself, that for you to know the aspect of the land, you have to conduct a search at the land registry. Yes. And when you conduct a search there, at least there is a certain amount you pay. Now, when it comes to the land where it is the physical search, this land is situated in a certain place, a certain locality. And that place has leaders. So that's why the LC1 at that point becomes important and relevant in the entire process because he or she is the person who is going to inform you about that particular land and maybe the vendor of mm. the land. Yes. yes. Now, coming to your question, in however much they are very important in this process, there is still a legal gap that there is no provision for their payment in this whole process. Theirs is a duty that they have to witness on the transaction and of course inform you in however much for the ministry of land for for them to inform us on what is happening on the land we just pay we pay them a certain amount of money for the lc1 unfortunately there is no provision like that mm -hmm. so they are not entitled to any pay what has been happening it is just a matter of, of practice right yeah. and so the landowners and let's say the ones buying yeah. have taken it upon themselves mm. to give them this money or are the LC ones the ones demanding for this percentage? Well, um, initially, it used to be out of the buyer courtesy. on volution or courtesy mm. to pay something to the, um, to the LC. But what has happened now is that you get them demanding for this money. Mm. They even convene uh, meetings and tell you that I have the, chair, the vice chairperson here, we have the chairperson here, we have the secretary women affairs, we have the secretary these affairs. They are all here to witness your transaction. Now you're here, you have come to conduct your, your business and they are telling you, they're introducing you to the entire executive committee. How are you going to leave them there? Yeah. So they now start are putting you in a situation where you cannot live without paying them. Mm. Yes. But, um, you know, in your professional experience, this is not legal practice. It is not legal. And, it is not and, provided for you under and, any law. And one mm. does not have to comply. But maybe out of courtesy, like you said to the LC1, yes, one yes. can give him something, but it, it's not... It's, it's not provided for under the law. It is not lawful. It is not legal. So like yeah. you've mentioned, sometimes mm. you come and they've set up for you a whole, you know, a committee. Um, committee. Yes. How does one, how would you advise one to go about a situation like that? How would you advise them to handle that situation? Well, uh, looking at uh, a transaction, you know, when you're, when you're approaching a transaction, you have to put in, to, to put on the business spectrum on, on yeah. it, uh, whereby you, you do not want the transaction to collapse. And uh, you do not want to your, your, your client to go on to um, a, a location or a locality where he or she is, is perceived to be a non-compliant, of course, uh, according to the executive committee of the village. Yeah. Yes. So now what, what, what you would advise that person to do under those circumstances is to, is to negotiate with the LC people. In every much they are not entitled to anything. Mm -hmm. At that level, you can advise him or her if they are willing to pay that they pay something for the LC. This is an interesting conversation. Let's first look at what's happening in the sector in our news segment.
China's struggling real estate developers won't be getting a major bailout, Chinese authorities have indicated, warning that those who harm the interests of the masses will be punished. For real estate companies that are seriously insolvent and have lost the ability to operate, those that must go bankrupt should go bankrupt or be restructured in accordance with the law and market principles. Ni Hong, the Minister of Housing and Urban Rural Development, said at a press conference on Saturday. Those who commit acts that harm the interests of the masses will be resolutely investigated and punished in accordance with the law, he said. They will be made to pay the due price.